you all went through a park system master plan that looks at your entire system, uh, the condition of your parks. Um, we looked at every park. Uh, we did a statistically valid survey that was know about the citizens. We held a public open house. Uh, there were six really major key recommendations that came out of that plan. I have the, that plan up here today. The first one was addressing your aquatic facility. Um, and then your existing facilities, your parks, your trail connectivity, um, your continued safety of parks, <coughs> new park acreage with the ball field complex, and then of course signage. Uh, we held a public open house on October 2nd for the MCA to specifically address uh, what citizens would like to see in a new community park. At that time, the city had a piece of ground behind Walmart. Uh, they were offering you uh, for that new community park. Uh, we had looked at it. We had studied it. Uh, we knew it, it was going to be a very difficult piece of ground to do uh, ball fields on. Um, and that was the primary focus of what we heard out of the input was um, people wanted ball fields. Uh, they saw the need for the new community park, but felt the location of the park was not close enough in Japan. Um, so at the October 24th Park Board meeting, um, a group of citizens put a proposal together um, and came forward with that well thought out plan um, for an alternate location uh, for that new park. Um, on your behalf, we looked at it with uh, your engineer, uh, Garland and West. Um, we looked at many different versions, many different layouts uh, of how that new community park could be accommodated. Uh, go back briefly here. The, the preferences at that October 2nd meeting were for a community event space, ball diamonds, soccer fields, splash pad, playground, and restroom facilities. Um, this is a proposal that the citizens group brought forward. Uh, it, was a very, it is a very visionary uh, proposal for the city to uh, continue to think about as we move forward in the development of this new park in terms of making additions to the first piece of this visionary plan. Um, the visionary plan included trails uh, that connected the east side of Cameron to the current uh, west side of Cameron uh, using the old railroad bridge over the interstate. Uh, it included ideas of the, the depot uh, being sort of a snack shack and, and stops along in the park. Um, it, it was an everyone wins situation. Um, because it is closer to town for residents, easier to get to. So um, uh, we looked at the plan, uh, we looked at the configurations, uh, we looked at several um, versions of how to grade the site to accommodate this. Um, we settled on two tracts of land um, that are just uh, west of 35 and south of 36. Uh, that are close to town. One would provide a connection from Northland Drive, uh, most likely in the future. Um, a first phase development would develop 8th Street as a, as a park road, as a connector into this future park. So we feel like this would be the first step into that overall grand plan. Um, we think the plan uh, can accommodate additions to it, as you see here. Um, there are some things that we've rearranged based upon topography and, and things that like Matt pointed out of where, the, where really the old growth trees are uh, on these, these two tracts of land. Um, and so this, this new community park is outside of an area that is currently served in your community in terms of park space. So you would be uh, adding uh, your service area uh, broadening your service area for park space in your community by using uh, this new community park. Uh, so let's cut to the chase and, and look at the plan. Um, hot off the press, I will tell you that this is a draft. Um, I, I ask each of you as park board members to review it. Um, 
we intend to have an open house for the community to provide comments and feedback and thoughts on March 18th, Wednesday, March 18th at the YMCA from 5.30 to 7.30. Um, and at that meeting, we ask the community to bring their thoughts and ideas. I will provide you, after I get your feedback, a digital copy to post on your Facebook page uh, and on the city page. I'll also get a board to, uh, to Drew so we can display it here inside City Hall for residents to come and take a look at. Um, we feel given um, that your uh, community initiative that you will take in April um, dedicates a certain amount to the community pool uh, and a certain amount to this new community park. Um, we feel from what the new community park would get as a part of that effort. Um, we feel that we can get uh, three baseball diamonds, baseball, softball, um, that are um, softball size, um, and then a high school type baseball size field. And in addition to that, um, because of the existing lay of this land, we feel we're able to uh, accommodate two soccer fields which we were not able to accommodate at the land behind Walmart because of its grade. Um, we accommodate a uh, parking lot. Um, we hope to get an additional lot further to the north, uh, a playground that will service the ball field departments, <coughs> and uh, a community uh, amphitheater space that is a grass amphitheater um, with a pad that you can park a larger stage trailer on for larger events. Um, we size that community amphitheater to be roughly about half the size of what Carney has. Um, it will not have a stage like Carney yet, unless you choose to take that on in a future endeavor. Uh, but we have located a large uh, pavilion at the top of that slope um, for community, larger community events. Um, we also have we're hopeful to uh, provide some practice field area um, in this area. And in the future, those could develop into two additional diamonds over top uh, when you need them. Um, if you don't need them immediately, they can stay as practice areas only. Um, this tract of land offers a great opportunity to allow future field expansion whether that be a diamond sport or a rectangular sport. Um, we also have planned in the future a larger playground uh, with the potential of a splash pad uh, to go sort of a simple feature of all that's going on. Um, there's a lot of this park acreage that is undeveloped. Um, your current parks that you have are, are pretty well developed uh, and you need room to grow and add things. Uh, to the northern side is the side of the, the very large uh, uh, existing tree tracks area that you could do some nature trails, hiking trails in. Um, possibly think about this golf coming around the edge of this. Um, those are some of our early thoughts. And then you've got plenty of space closer to the neighborhood up here off the Northland Drive for a basketball, pickleball, uh, horseshoe areas uh, in, in a future phase. Um, and that's, that's what we think will be the start of this grand vision, is, is these two tracks. Uh, we thank and we will continue to work with you over the next few months on really dialing in um, what we think this is going to cost. We think we have a pretty good handle on that right now. But we want to make for sure that we can deliver the, the, to the community the, the, the picture that we show. So at this point, I'd open it up to any questions you may have. Um, I'd be more than happy to try and answer them. Speaker, I think that one comment from the item was said to be at the bottom right now. The arrow with the potential future trails going across the railroad bridge to the way um, we wanted to show that because um, the city owns this triangle.
particular piece right down here that is not part of what is being purchased. And it would provide you access to that. I'm not sure who owns that bridge. Uh, but that would be some future discussions that could be had. It would provide a great uh, bicycle pedestrian connection across to the area on the east that is developing and sort of residential homes. Um, and I wanted to, to throw that idea out there because it was part of the bigger vision. Um, not and, so much the park plan, but just an overall city. Uh, not so much the park, but more of a city-wide okay. thing. I, I don't, I think dealing with the bridge over an interstate is not a park board issue. Right. It's, a, it's a bigger yeah. city-wide transportation issue. Yeah. Um, so, um, and we've done this before, you, you have to go all the way to feds to get all that approval and they're not going to want to touch it, they won't want to give it to you, but do you want to take it? Yeah, does it mean a lot of other things? So, um, but I didn't want to preclude that, that idea on the plan because I thought it was a good one, a good one for you to think in terms of a long-term uh, development of, of this park and if you add adjacent tracks, that would be the key. But yeah, I'm actually absolutely right. Um, when they divided the right of way the corridor, if it was still intact, then, then it would make a lot more sense. Yeah. The size of the top fields, as I said, here on this map, what were those? Those, those are regulation fields running north-south. You could do uh, U12 east-west. You could get four U12. Um, you could do oh, this, right? U10. You could get four uh, per field, so you get eight U10 on there. Um, so I know that you're kind of cramped already in your current soccer situation and also uh, your football. Uh, those might offer you some relief. Uh, in that, and you know, there's additional space here in the future uh, that you can expand either one of those, whether it be um, youth baseball, t ball, whatever you've got the room to be able to expand. And so, this, this, these two tracks of land offer you something you did not have an option for at Park Valley, you could not expand. Um, we think um, it will provide better access. Uh, in Park Valley. Obviously, any new facility is going to uh, have all the new ADA access and upgrades that you need to accommodate uh, ADA access to the facility. Uh, we are showing a, a small restroom concession building here. Um, we have also kind of thought about it, uh, another one over here to service this side of the park, uh, a much smaller just a two-sided uh, restroom uh, over there. Um, using a prefab type structure, you can get those very reasonable. Um, but any, any infrastructure we put in, we want to be able to put it in in a way that these are easily accomplished in the future. So we want to, with, the, with this effort, we want to prepare you to move <coughs> into this plan. We want to, want to have the connection there, we want to have the size right, we want to be able to make it an easy thing to add something on in the future. So I would ask that you take the uh, fact sheet home, yep. take the map home, uh, don't look at it tonight, get up in the morning when you're fresh, Read every word, look at every label, look at everything on the map, and get your comments to Drew. And then um, hopefully by the uh, middle of next week, I can have something uh, officially released uh, with the notice of that public meeting. Great. Thank you very much. And just like that, on the second part of that was the water facility. The sales tax does have the sunset of 25 years as well on the ballot. So we figured out how much money for the pool, how much then we could do for this community park. Uh, it is exciting. I think this is probably going to be close to 100 acres once all everything's assembled out there. It does give us plenty of room for growth. Uh, the one thing and probably the main thing that we need to keep 
uh, reiterating to everybody is the aquatic facility is staying at Recreation Park. Did you have a picture of the diagram for that tonight? I do not, okay. but uh, we have talked to our, uh, our, our, our engineer, Andy Smith at Lamprey Nearson, who's been working on the pool and working with Steve and I have for over probably a decade on condition and evaluations and design. Uh, he will be at the YMCA at that open house on Wednesday, March 18th from 5.30 to 7.30. Uh, and it's, a, it's open at any time. It's a, it's a come and go as you please, so you can show up at any time between that two hour time slot. But this is, this is essentially what it's like it is. It's, it, right? I mean, it is. The, yet, no, there are no changes. This is almost the exact same plan that went out the last so, four or five years ago. So, if anybody wants to take a look at it after the meeting's over, I'll be happy to share it. I thought I thought that we were going to have that here on The key takeaway of this is for the swim area over here, the size of the regulation for the swim team people to be able to do meets, not have to.